Sometimes maybe. Sometimes maybe. Um, so we're going to kick off with a joint meeting. We'll bring our group to order at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the select board is also, and then. We have a forum. It's gathering. Uh, we already have a forum. And we have really good pizza from the community over. So I would really like to have dinner, so please don't eat it all. <laughs> uh, sure. uh, the other thing is okay, next thing is we're going to have a discussion on flood event administrator. So with the joint group, we're going to have a discussion on flood event administrator. Possible executive session. If we do, we'll pick up and go next door. Um, the appointment, so that's the executive session, and then a potential offer of employment. Then we'll jump into select board meeting, which will be about um, all things select board that we get to it. Uh, that will meet immediately follow the end of this. Um, if it ends before or after 6 30, we will kick off immediately following. Any adjustments or additions to our agenda that folks yeah. here have? Um, Evan? Nope. Uh, you don't have any, Ken? No, ma'am. Anyone else on the group? Okay. Cool. Sorry. Um, so the two people I actually want to speak to the first agenda item are not here. Um, <laughs> but we had some discussions about the need for um, hiring someone to support us in all things flood, essentially, because uh, we're trying to hold down everything that needs to happen. Um, so, in discussion on all things flood, um, there is a need, it sounds like, from both the village side and also the town side on supporting the flooding event. So a quick, a quick update from our side. We have reached out to somebody about forming this service for us. Okay. Um, not that we haven't accepted anything or done any deal, but we have reached out. I will know more tomorrow. Okay. That sounds good. And anyone want to add anything on the select board side? Are you on the um, <coughs> hiring? We're on or the discussion, just discussion about, about hiring, hiring a, a FEMA uh, administrator for flood. All right. The so, only thing I will add to that is I reached out to three separate, three yeah. separate entities. Separate, yeah. Hopefully that covered us. Um, uh, one is MRI uh, Inc. One was uh, LCPC. I don't think we should talk about it. Um, it's public record. It's public for it's the public request. Knowledge. Okay. I wouldn't see why we wouldn't. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, and the other is uh, uh, Ron Rakensky's. Stone Shore, uh, let's see, wherever is Ron is, is here tonight. Okay. Um, two of the three are able to provide services. Uh, LCPC indicated that they could not. Um, so it's really down to MRI and Ron Rajetsky. Okay, sounds good. Um, so there are, some, there are some ideas around potentially sharing a resource, but I hear us talking about different resources. Are we thinking at this point? They would be different resources between the two between the town versus village, rather than a single. So, from my understanding on it, is is that we are going to have way more than the town with the utilities, and to have a combined one, we would we would deplete your resources with the amount of work that we would have. Um, again, this is just my assumption from talking to a couple of people. Uh, ours are going to be a 40-hour job for six months, by the sounds of it. Uh, okay. Well, we're discussing this topic. Um, but yeah, I do agree separate entities should have separate people just for delineation and clarity and, and best interest of each. Um, two of the buildings that are have insurance claims filed for them uh, but will be involved in the FEMA reimbursement are jointly owned. Are those both on the town insurance policy or is one on town, one on village? How, who's taking the ball in jointly owned properties? I just want that to be clear. Um, I think it makes sense for the town to handle the municipal building uh, and potentially the lower storage. I haven't had a discussion with the whole board, but that would be important to know just so there's not duplication of services and nothing is missed. And I agree we've had that discussion. I would I would agree and I would propose that the town take the lead 
on the municipal building and the lower storage building. If that's amenable to the trustees, I think we should probably have a motion from you guys authorizing the town to, to be the lead or the authorized representative to deal with FEMA on those. Yep, so I'd be looking for a motion for uh, Duncan's proposal. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Um, so the question I still have on those two units is do you have insurance coverage on them? Because that the one claim will be different than the lower storage and The town hall is definitely on the town. Yeah, I think the lower storage is on the village. When we had the raccoon damage, they may go check out the village. Okay, so for that 12 and a half percent reimbursement, is it going to be a problem if the town takes the FEMA side and it's a village claim? I would say we, we would just work with the village. Yeah, the yeah, working together is great. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that wouldn't be a problem. If, if the village has to take that on, I think we will have the capability with the person that I have had discussions with. <clears throat> okay. Again, I do not have an answer on that until yeah. probably tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. So just for clarity, the village will take the insurance claim for the lower storage building. The town will take the insurance claim from the municipal building. And the town would be taking care of the FEMA administration for both. Just to like reiterate what we just talked about. I think that's acceptable by the village. Cool. Perfect. And for clarity's purposes, I did file insurance claims, which I turned over to Carl. Um, it's an initial. Um, notice of filing uh, for the lower building, the municipal building, uh, the library, and the skate park. So those those four forms have been submitted as you know the preliminary notice of claim. I believe Anne has done the same for the village properties. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, given the fact that we're going to address the administration separately, I feel like our joint meeting could be called, could adjourn, unless we have any other joint business. Could I um, suggest that we move the possible executive session and offer a hi uh, hiring into our regular board meeting? Yeah, that's what I was suggesting, is um, that we actually just take those and shift them down. Unless. Yeah, go ahead, Ken, what you not, not that I'm against it, but I think we should explore the opportunity that we have also, just to cover both ends, because there is no guarantee that we will have a, a person tomorrow. Right. Um, but at the same time, I understand that the, the person we're going to talk to has only a capability of 25 hours, which I guess in reality isn't enough for us, so you're probably correct, and we do not need to continue. Well, the, the tricky part about that is e either way, each independent entity would have to do a interview yep. uh, and a separate hiring. So I don't see how the village needs to be part of the interview and hiring for the town, but you guys will have to warn that. You are you guys have a meeting on the yep, horizon? Yep, everything tomorrow. Yep. Okay, I didn't so you have guys everything finalized because of you had me busy. But right, but you guys have <laughs> stuff lined up and and working yes. on that. Uh, one. Did you have a question or a comment, Jason? I was in there today. You know, the, the one thing I don't is your is your uh, plow uh, electric over hydraulic? It was underwater. That's upside down. So uh, we, we definitely, that'll be part of the damage assessment process is to, and the village has a lot of electrical supply stuff in there. We're yes. going to need to work with the village closely on figuring out, out the cost of those damages. So uh, my guess is the furnace is toast, um, and that alone will probably trigger the minimum dollar threshold for a, a FEMA site. So I think we're there. We'll, we will need your help in looking at that stuff and figuring out costs. 
Um, I, just to clarify, I still have not talked to the fire chief about rinsing and the building out. I will try to do that tomorrow morning also. Here, and the town and village crews guys know the play in there. They're at least in the loop. The village crew, I think we discussed it a little bit when you were there this morning, Jason, but I'll have Nate definitely fill you in before they go so that we can, we might possibly have to work together to move your plow and a couple other things. So I took pictures safely. today, but pictures, pictures, yep. pictures. Can't do too many pictures. <laughs> I got a bunch of pictures of when the water was in there. Good. Good. So I will go in the morning and I'll take a bunch of pictures again for that section before we start doing it. Great. So if you feel we should adjourn, I have no issue with that. Okay, let's do it. A motion to adjourn? I'll make, a, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you going, Eric? You gotta stay. Can I leave? Okay. So are we calling? I guess we never have I was turned. prepared for a long one. Well, well, maybe you might be, but I think uh, uh, the option of discussion with you earlier is gonna work out. So I'll fill you in. Okay. Okay. I'll be at the center. Do you want to adjourn and I'll turn um, one quick thing for you guys go too far. Could I get a key for the municipal office from somebody to get in in the morning and finish draining the elevator before they come back? I can meet you there in the morning. Seven? Or, yeah. Just, just yeah, no gonna problem. be there or, about eight, so as long as I can. Yeah, I can meet you there. Or, or maybe somebody's going down there around seven. I don't know. I'll I'll figure that out. I could be there if Evan, if Evan just. Yeah. Did. If somebody could let me in at seven, I'll take care of that so that we can get <laughs> Sounds like the board on the circuitry fried. So. Lovely. Well, we used it a few times, and so it ran down the cable harness and went in. Ah. Okay. Good luck um, the news. So for select board, so we'll go into the possible. We'll go into executive session on the evaluation of the employee potential applicant for employment. Then we'll go into possible notice or ordinance. Additions or changes to the agenda. I guess we should talk about that right now. Actually, I asked earlier, but I think a couple of you weren't here. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah. I have, I have one. I I think I. It would be great if if I could take maybe three minutes or two minutes to update people on the town administrator search, and there might be a couple of action items related to that. Okay, and did, did we add the uh, extra executive session at the end? Yeah, we need one more executive okay. session. Uh, so another executive session. Uh, for employee relations. Yeah, for employee relations. It's a uh, it's a bit set for the greater that is needed. It it wasn't worn. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Do you have quotes, Jason? If you know about what it is, we could make a motion up to yeah, not to exceed. Okay. So executive session, potential offer of employment, um, noise ordinance, um, flood event. And there's a bunch of sub items in flood, flood event, um, future select board meeting, and then tax interest payments. We'll put the grader about right behind the executive session, and we'll put the TA search right behind the grader, um, and we'll keep everything else as is. With the, with the lab, with an additional executive session at the end. Okay. So, Yep. Are we doing the the first executive session? Yeah, now, and we'll right now. The yeah. I would move, uh, I don't have the right uh, uh, language with me, but move to enter executive session for the purpose of contract. VA. 1 VSA 313A3. What he said. Okay. Motion to have a second? Second. And I would, I would, uh, Invite Ron Wojcicki to that, and Rosemary, and Rosemary, and Carl, and Carl. Okay. So, is that friendly? Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay, let's go next door. So we're gonna have some hang out in this hot room or the hallway, which is cooler. Or the other <laughs> or the outside. Authorization for somebody. Okay, we're out of executive session. At 6.59. Um, do we have a motion to out of executive session? So moved. No one made a motion. <laughs> to, oh, that was a good one. To, to come out of executive session or what? Is there a motion? No, we're coming out. out of. Coming okay. out of. I will make a motion that we hire uh, the low bidder, um, Stone Shore Associates, is it? Whatever it is. Um, to assist Carl Rogers with FEMA uh, with flood management services uh, on an as needed basis, not putting a limit on the number of hours that are needed, at least initially, um, for as long as we may need. And to further authorize the chair to execute a contract for those services. Second. Any discussion? Under the discussion, I'd just like the public to know that all of these costs are expected to be reimbursed in some way, shape, or form by FEMA. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I have a form right here. Um, other members of the select board would like to see it. I can pass it down. As Rosemary, this gets submitted to the office. I, I, I got it done at three o'clock today. So, okay. all right. Can you just read the? Yes, um, absolutely. It might be easier. Um, so, uh, Tommy Moog uh, and Oxbow Music Festival. Um, they had planned to put on uh, Summer Jam 73 at the Oxbow Park in Morrisville, which of course, due to the uh, flooding, is no longer available. Uh, so uh, o OMF, Oxbow Music Festivals, would like to move their event to Moves Joint for the same date, which is July 29th. Um, the time would be 3 p.m. until 1 a.m. Um, there are going to be three live music acts, as well as food and craft vendors. Um, and because it would go until 1 a.m., it would require a noise ordinance. Wait, sorry. Okay. And at, it's at Luke's location? <coughs> on at Luke's location. Tommy's here to answer any questions we may have. Hello. How's it going? Can we do this repeat yearly? <laughs> I, I would love that. Uh, especially right now, I think people need music. So um, I think it's a great thing for our town. I live in Johnson. You know, I like if it. this event goes really well, it could be an annual event, absolutely. What day of the week is the 29th? Saturday night, Saturday. July 29th. It's um, I'm pretty sure that we're going to wrap up our outside noise well before midnight, and then our last act is inside. But it's just nice to put 1 a.m. on it for any excessive noise or anything. Got it. That's helpful. Do you have a question? No. I was going to discuss it under discussion. I mean, this is specifically a noise ordinance waiver. I'll, I'll motion to authorize the noise ordinance waiver request. Given your location and the amount of debris behind it, Town's not responsible for any. Wait, okay, wait. That's not for your motion. So your okay, motion there's the motion. <laughs> the motion second. was to approve. Okay, Authorize noise ordinance waiver. And we have a second. Uh, now you can have your discussion. Go ahead. I worry about a public health concern with the amount of debris behind that location, but you're a private business owner and the town is not responsible. In the discussion, if I was worried about 
debris behind my restaurant, I wouldn't be doing this for the festival. I, I'm not going to compromise anybody's health. Thank you. If that river rises, we're not doing it. <laughs> uh, we have picked up, we're, we're moving at an extremely, ridiculously fast pace, cleaning up the, the mess. We've made an extreme amount, amount of progress. So. Wonderful. Well done. We're sorry about the flooding. Right? That's all you need to say. So, I think we already talked about it in a, open, in a public meeting, but we'll say it again. Um, this was the second highest event in Vermont history in terms of flood. Well, in recorded Johnson history. In our, in our Johnson history. I think it's in Vermont, too. I think they said Vermont on everything. Okay. Um, so, just want to throw that out there. Um, also, we're not out of the woods totally. We won't have the same event, but we could get some minor flooding, possibly. We won't throw that out there, too. It's a possibility. Hopefully, nothing impactful, seriously impactful. Um, flood event. So, to state, oh, I'm sorry, this we have to actually go through. Sorry, I didn't really prep that much. Um, we basically have a really solid crew of volunteers. Thank you to everybody who has volunteered your time. It's very much appreciated. Um, we are at a point where we have, um, I don't know if folks heard this, but we did 27, that fire department did 27 evacuations on the night of the flood overnight. Um, we quickly set up a shelter that night. Um, we also had to evacuate the office building that same night um, and we came up to this location. Um, at this shelter, we had people coming in pretty consistently, soaking wet until about 9, 10 a.m., um, holding their only belongings they took out, which was pretty much themselves and sometimes their pets. Um, it was a pretty tragic event, frankly. We quickly got in touch with um, local human services folks around the county, they were great. They um, came, the, the shelter came, came in, the welcome mental health came in, uh, clearing, uh, the Clarina Howard Nichols Center came in, um, United Way, there's more I'm missing. Um, we all came together and really got some pretty great um, local services to people in the shelter on day two. Um, they are still, I will in a second, they're still engaged. They, we basically made a plan on Wednesday, um, along with the Red Cross, the Red Cross took over at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, that um, those local services, each person coming to the shelter would have a case manager assigned to them from our local area. Um, and those local folks, even as Red Cross people, volunteers switch around a little bit, those local folks are right on it. I talked to Nicole Chauvin today. Um, they're doing a great job keeping the people in our community safe. So um, that's really great. Um, NVU College, Vermont State College University, Vermont uh, State University. Um, we've asked, they've delivered in every respect. Um, they've been really huge. They're providing food service to the shelter and have been since the night of the event, well, the morning of the event. Um, they're housing us. We're here at pretty insane hours, frankly, and they're like whatever you need. So, um, like, I can't imagine going through this without them. So whenever anyone has an opportunity to talk about how great they are, please take it, take that opportunity, push it out there. Additionally, in terms of the, I just want to keep like saying this publicly because it's really important. 
Um, not only did they provide space and really help us with logistics and operational um, service, uh, they have some really great leadership that is pretty new leadership that has guided us in the emergency response in ways I can't even tell you the connections they have, the support they've given, the suggestions on how to approach things. They are one of the reasons we have the support services in a very small town that we have. Um, I can't say enough good things about what they've done for us. So um, I really hope that comes through really loudly and clearly. Um, yeah. I'm going to pause there for a second before we get into anything else that is too deep. Um, does anyone, anyone else want to add anything? Uh, just while we're kind of giving out a, a positive update and, and thank yous, I'd like to thank the town crew, the village crew, uh, all the staff in the office, any employee that's employed by the town or village. If I missed you, I'm sorry. And uh, a lot of really key community partners, um, <clears throat> just genuine people out there doing everything they can for the community have stepped up. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, because I know you guys aren't going to do this, I also want to thank everyone they thanked, but also those two uh, who have put in an insane amount of hours through this, who have not slept very much and, you know, uh, have not been showing up to their normal day job because this is their day job now. Um, while a lot of us have been maybe helping our neighbors or, you know, working on our own properties, these guys have shown up for the entire town in a way that, uh, you know, goes above and beyond, so. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so, you know, just the message is help your neighbor, you know, for community. Okay, um, let's get into a little bit more detail on where we are. Um, we have dumpsters that folks, I hope everybody's hearing about. If you're not hearing about it, please show it to anyone who may not know. Um, current dumpster locations, and Nat, I'm going to ask you to help me if I don't get it right, are um, the corner of Railroad Street in Maine, um, down at, I think it's at East Highland at this point, um, but near the intersection of East and West Highland. Um, do we have one at River Road West? There was one, there's one that was needed for a couple of residents in extreme need, where it would be dangerous to assist with equipment. I don't know where that is, but there's one somewhere else. Go ahead, Nat. That might be um, Lower Main Street, um, where the payment sign is, the uh, unique payment sign is. Um, I don't think you want to be running equipment out there like we did last night on Railroad Street. Oh, we think of most of already. We probably don't think of the building. Yeah. They make, it, guys, they make it disappear before we talk about it. It's not a nice job either, what these guys are doing. Um, one of the things that came up just in, in talking with folks around um, debris removal is that we see a lot on the streets. That's great. We want to see a lot on the streets. We should encourage that because we need it to get out of those yeah. inside. It has to come out of inside. And secondly, even though there's a lot outside and it looks like they're probably almost done, it doesn't mean they are. So um, we should just be prepared for this to go a little bit longer than maybe we might be anticipating. Um, maybe not, but I just want to throw it out there so that we're setting expectation and we're really supporting the people who need it. Um, yeah. This is a little bit off topic, but it is related to uh -huh. the cleanup and the, the heavy equipment that's on the road, that are on the roads, is just got buyers. Idea with field days coming this weekend. There's going to be a lot of extra traffic in town. You want to discourage looky loos, and you could put signs up that say local traffic only for certain places, railroad street, must come over. That kind of thing. Are you talking just for like the resident safety and everything, keeping yeah. it out of congestion? Yeah. My truck got blocked the other morning by somebody. I 
Yeah. yeah. Is that something you guys could possibly accommodate on like a Friday or? We're gonna want to speak up. Everybody should speak up. So I have a speaker right yeah, here. The fan, oh, up. The fan is loud behind us though. Oh, is that something they you guys think you could? You, but I need to be able to hear you too. You heard me, right? Starts Friday now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Typically Friday. Girls married. Yeah, Friday. Maybe start Friday. Do you want to do it on the last Railroad Street? Railroad Street? I think just like if it's, yeah, River <laughs> Railroad Street and Westcombe Road would. And if we're only closing on the 15th side, yeah, yeah, makes sense to me. Okay, um, so dumpsters is one item. Um, there are, there's also the uh, multi-agent. Multi-agency resource center. The acronym is MARC. Yeah, with no K. Um, that is happening. It happens today, 9 to 5. It will happen today about 10 to 5. It will happen again tomorrow, 9 to 5, and Wednesday, 9 to 5 at the elementary school gym. Um, that is about bringing people into a central place where they can get support systems through multiple agencies, including FEMA, including um, Vermont state agencies on all kinds of things, you know, housing, mental health, um, food resources, basically assistance, you name it, right? Um, there also, I just want to point out here really quickly, is that they also do have well testing kits available through one of the tables to the health department um, for folks who have wells near rivers. Um, and at this point, I would caution to say anyone near a flowing river source that is not up really high, uh, or downstream of any municipality at all, um, it may be wise to check your water. Um, so those are available there. So sure. on, the, on the testing part, are they tested for each one, or are they, just because your well is for each one, so there's so much chemistry. I would assume it's just a coliform E. coli test. That's <coughs> going to be the cheap one that they do for free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, any other state of emergency briefing item? Uh, FEMA is here for individual assessment. They're starting the assessment phase. We've not yet seen the municipal team. There are two different teams. Um, everybody should apply for FEMA who is impacted, period, and the statement. If you get denied, you read the fine print. Um, Oh yes, so so that you can be prepared, uh, regardless of whether you had flood insurance or not, you should call your insurance company. Uh, if they say you do not have flood insurance, you should ask them for an email stating that, because FEMA is going to require that document down the road. So be prepared if you can. My sense is, is talking to FEMA, it is only for residents. It's not for small business owners. Or As stated earlier, if they deny you, apply. Anyways. That's what the FEMA person told me. And the other thing on that is that so there, are, there are disaster relief funds in other federal agencies. So I know agriculture, if farmers are supposed to go through USDA, businesses are supposed to go through the SBA. So that, you know, some of the disaster relief stuff has been put in other places under the FEMA. Um, I would actually encourage anyone who has questions about these types of things 
and what Shane said, that's what we keep hearing. Um, but I do encourage folks to go down to the MARC, down to the, the Resource Center tomorrow or Wednesday, and ask your questions. It's not going to hurt to ask. You may not get all the answers you want, but you may get ideas about other options that are out there. The other thing just to consider for businesses is that the town does have a revolving loan fund, low interest revolving loan fund. I was right out there, just so it's said. Um, and if there's interest, um, you can submit that interest to me or Carl, and we can get that discussion started. I think that's good enough on the state of the emergency. Okay, beginning financial discussion. Can I offer one thing? Sure, please. So just be, because Green Mountain Access is filming this and some people might actually watch it, I think it's important to know and understand FEMA is not going to come into town with a checkbook and write checks to people. Um, it's a process. Um, and, you know, the individual assistance part of that, as Beth has pointed out, you know, go to the mark and... Uh, and get that dealt with. Uh, as far as the public assistance piece is concerned, we just hired someone to assist um, with that process. Uh, and it, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while. And it's going to be uh, perhaps painful in some cases. So I just don't expect that they're going to come in and write a check for uh, you know, your house or your business or whatever. And we, and the other part of that, sorry, I let me can just say and forever, but the other part of all of this is that we are not experts in supporting FEMA. We're not going to have the answers, frankly. We have our own FEMA claims that we'll be dealing with. So it is really important that you can talk to informed people to help guide you through this. And those informed people will be folks like um, the FEMA representatives, going through the application process. Um, to some extent, the state representatives, um, maybe they have suggestions or can guide. Um, and I know that there are local groups, such as United Way, who are looking at um, assisting with FEMA applications if you need help. So if you do need help, reach out to those local human service groups, and they can help. OK. Um, beginning financial discussions around the value event. And you want to pick us up on soon? It's going to cost a lot. <laughs> it's a good beginning. Uh, FEMA is a reimbursement system. Uh, everything needs to be paid for up front, and FEMA will reimburse a certain percent, reimburse a certain percentage of that. Um, from my understanding, sometimes the state steps in and reimburses another portion of that and sometimes insurance steps in and funds another portion of that uh, we don't need any action out of here um, and I guess this will heavily rely on Rosemary's suggestions but we are going to need money in the interim uh, until reimbursement happens we do have the emergency fund emergency reserve fund that's only going to get us a little way down the road I'm not sure if ARPA funds could be brought in and used and then reimbursed. Um, well, when I was talking with Rosemary this morning, she said, uh, a line of credit from a bank. "Yeah, she's suggesting maybe the town get a line of credit from a bank, even if we don't need to use it. It would, uh, you know, be easier to have it in place." Do you have um, a suggestion for the mail, Rosemary? And how do we know if we can use? The ARPA money. We can. We were already told that. For this? We can put it, put it in towards the budget. It's yeah, a, we, can, we can use it as an offset to um, our you know, regular expenses. So, so I guess. We were planning to do that. Well, we had talked about it. We had talked about it. We, the current plan is if we get the grant to use the ARPA funding for that. But mm, Which grant? The. Um, Sorry, the northern borders. Northern borders. Oh. Northern that wasn't even all of the ARPA money. It wasn't yeah, all of it. Was, it, was, it, was it was a good amount. It was 400000 Yeah. And we've already committed 100000 Yeah. Roughly. Yeah, but at least I, we'll have high speed internet. I just, would, just I would for me, I would be supportive of the Latin planet. Yeah. yeah. I would move. 
do you think it should be 100,000, 200,000? Uh, a couple hundred thousand? Yeah. I have heart problems, Rosemary. Come on now. Well, well, well we, you're spending. We only down, you know, take what we need. Right, right. I understand. Yeah. I would, I would move um, the the town authorized Rosemary to execute a line of credit in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars. Do you have a question? Do a second. Second. Discussion. I was talking with the Union Bank today, we are 4.75% So can we do everything we can to not use that? Yes. Absolutely everything we can? I'll even throw out there, we can cut the select board's pay for the year. <laughs> I've been speaking to Ricardo. That was weird for you to say that. Right? We get paid a lot to do this thankless yeah. job. Yeah. And I will donate it back. Then we take yeah. care of half the dust. Right, we're, we we're, 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 we're one percent of the way there. Uh, Ron. So as part of uh, the reporting up that we uh, ideally would have in these meetings on uh, flood issues of the borrow, I think it will be important for road memory once these initial damage assessments are sort of collected and itemized roughly from uh, purely a cash flow perspective keep pushing that information to you so heartburn goes away a little bit or it gets worse, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's part of uh, good communication is as soon as we get good numbers, get that to Carl so we can sort of start looking at the cash flow issues and not expense as much. So I think part of the reporting would be doing that. And I, I can start that process with Should we? Yeah, but just have spent looking at some Finances you all have. And the ARPA thing is it's totally available, and I and I you have to have a goal with all that. So again, that can be another discussion, another meeting. Yeah. Some of these costs. And, yeah, should we, for for FEMA purposes, should we obtain more than one proposal from more than one bank for opening a line of credit? Is that even an eligible ARPA? Uh, FEMA expense, open I, don't know, geez, I, I did, In some world, I can't believe that's a cost of, you know, if you attribute it to the fund, it's a cost of the fund. And I think they look at everything. Whether they approve it or not, I don't know. But, you know, part of the assessment process is collecting all your costs. You know, so I think in the end, uh, it wouldn't be that much. But hopefully you don't have to use it because we come up with some, something that makes sense to do in front of my Carl? It's a reimbursable. So one thing you do is try to get the insurance involved right away. Expensive case that instead of working out a road somewhere in the vehicle, so that's not going to be affecting the cash flow line except for the Definitely worth looking at. My experience in the past is they have said they'll come in and pick up the cost that FEMA doesn't, but. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was, I was, you know, whatever the information is, it, I try to identify as much as you can and let it sort itself out. Yeah. Approved, not approved, but you, you still want a total cost of the project, you know, this event. That's, right. that's an important number. However, it gets backfilled or to be, uh, to be determined. At the end of the day, it doesn't affect my motion, I don't think, and that's something you yeah, guys agreed. should work out. Okay. Deal. So, any other discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Um, any other begin financial discussions for the flooding event? Can I ask Rosemary a question? Yeah. With, with regard to that line of credit, is that something that if we authorize you, or are they going to send back a form that requires select board yeah. signatures? And we, we could come in individually and sign that, probably, if we need to, need to or? We don't think that's necessary. Okay. Um, I think 
Again, we can do it at our next regular meeting. Well, they're probably going to have a resolution and all of that yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just let me know when Rosemary. Okay. You know, for twenty four doesn't seven. have an immediate need for it, but yeah, understood. We good to have it in our back pocket. Yeah. Got it. All the yeah. interest we're earning on that money in the CDs isn't ready yeah. for this. What do you think we're at right now for cash flow, like in terms of yeah, for cash flow? All things considered, like what could we safely spend right this second? Wow, one that's, week. One week, Mark's just like the full salary. full surplus, or more or less. Yeah. Think there is any um, pop up? Okay. Um, next steps for flood event. Um, for next steps, I feel like there's just like so many next steps, but I think next steps for us is the FEMA rack will be here hopefully this week, and we will have our initial discussions with them, um, and that hopefully leads. That initial and municipal assessment hopefully leads to an invite for us to send an application in. Um, and that hopefully leads to us getting two different case managers for Johnson, one for the individual private sector and one for government sector. Um, that's a really big next step, hopefully. In other next steps, I think there are more boots on the ground next steps. Um, back to the dumpster that we can't keep the debris moving. Um, do you want to speak at all about the debris moving? I think it will be a lot of debris. Uh, uh, the dumpsters are moving in and out quick. Uh, there will be a team here, possibly by the end of this week or early next week, called Team Rubicon, which is mostly uh, retired veterans and they do a lot of from what I understand anything debris removal mud picking up slinging whatever um, <clears throat> do I want to say anything more about debris removal no <laughs> there's okay. a lot well the other thing we, we do need to just do is just make sure we have a um, good understanding of the movement of content within a dumpster we don't want to be built for things oh. that we don't own we do want to be make sure that we are properly built for the things that we are responsible for um, and we'll claim in terms of like number of loads and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is, Jason, we were just texting about, but um, we'll need to make sure that we're keeping track of time for people. So, Dean, this might apply to you, for example, too, uh, and Carl definitely, and Ron definitely. But we need to keep track of the time spent on flood event, what the time is for, and where you are. So if you're fixing a road, for example, we want to allocate those hours to that road and those materials to that road. Same as grandfather. Pretty much like the grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Um, what, One thing came up about debris management. Yeah. In the public dumpsters, do not put tires. There is a, or paint, or oil, or metal. There is a metal pile and a tire pile off to the side, I believe, uh, but. For hazardous materials, there's a hazardous materials number on our website. Please call it. Do we have signage by the dumpsters that says that clearly? It should be on the dumpsters, I believe, but it might not be if it's more off. I don't know. if people even read signs anymore, but really that's a, that's a great idea. We could put something out there for people to ignore. 
the best. Uh, no, it really is a good idea. The best thing we could possibly do is have somebody there to monitor it. Um, That's been Matt, and I, I hesitate know. to ask him. I, well, I, I was doing it too. Not, it's not here. It's hard. Know. You know, it, it's really hard. There, yeah. there was some, one suggestion about trying to get AmeriCorps volunteers, or you know, maybe that's something that Ron and Carl can work on. Yeah, I know the SEOC will. Um, that? Yeah. Yeah. The AmeriCorps people working on that. Yeah, yeah you confidence, have Ron. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't asked them, then they don't know about it. So okay. I got to follow up with Jason, can you just speak up a little bit? Uh -huh. yeah, I have one question about, uh, about the Dumpster, River Road East, Dumpster, yes. Westcombe Road. Yeah. There was 10 dumpsters that left Westcombe Road and 30 that left Railroad Street, Main Street, just that. And, Trucks would be important to keep track of. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Um, because it's uh, been helping out a few folks and everything, and I think what's going to start changing the transition is instead of belongings and furniture and stuff, it's going to start getting to sheetrock mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. Is there anything in particular that people, that the public should know about about the, the sheetrock kind of, uh, you know, trash and that kind of, like, Where that, yeah, just, yeah, okay. I Wear just, a mask, we're doing that. I mean, should wear an N95 mask, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Nitro gloves. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, if sheetrock rain comes along, we're, it's yeah. degrading, and then it's going to be twice as hard for them to like clean it up. Yeah. Think yeah. about like having the choice of doing sheetrock, put it on a park, or I don't know. Just, so I can, I can jump in on this because yeah. I just got in the house as a favor for somebody, and then you got in the house, it all gets thrown up in the air. Yeah. Anyway, you can get it out of the house as fast as you can, so you can probably get it there. That's, yeah. We tried to put down a piece of plastic and it was overwhelmed in two seconds. People were like, what do you want? And it goes out of the window. So it's heavy. Uh, and you're right, it does fall apart. It comes trouble. And it just suits. Uh, I would heavily encourage on outreach if people could put it in trash bags or on a tarp or some other way to make it friendly. Um, it if it was in trash bags, it would be a just Having been at the dumpster and trying to lift some of those bags up over, I'm too old for this crap <laughs> anymore. But it, I mean, some of those things, you know, some of those plastic bags probably weigh 150 pounds. Right? You know, so don't overfill them. My thought is, and I'm just going to throw this out and see what the rest of the board thinks, is it would probably be very helpful um, to not just say, hey, it'd be nice if you do this, but to do something to help people out and what I'm thinking is sponsoring a dump fee or dump fees for a day or a weekend uh, for people who have flood related debris. Um, well, we're helping people out. Or, yeah, I, I would be happy to entertain that. Right now the town is picking up the tab for their trash and paying somebody to pick, them, pick up their trash and drive it down the road. And I, I, I see that and it's, uh, you know, Jason's doing a great job. Uh, I still think, regardless of that, there are going to be people who are unable to get it to the dumpsters and leave it, you know, out on the sidewalk for it to be washed away by the next rain. Um, and especially with people coming to town this weekend for field days, you know, that's not something I want to have happening. Um, I also don't necessarily think that this weekend is the great weekend to do it because people are coming to town for field days and we don't necessarily need people riding up that same road to go to the dump. But uh, I think the sooner we can incentivize people to get this out of their houses, off their lawns, and to the transfer station, the better. Um, that's just my idea on how to do that. Um, great idea, but in following EPA guidance for flood remediation of the building, fast is better. 
So within 24 hours, you're supposed to like clean all that stuff out to put it in to avoid microbial growth. We're into this week, six days. Yeah. That's highly seven, seven So anything that we're going to point out, especially if you rock, soybeans, all that, it's biologically active. Mm -hmm. If you're referring to the curve, that's a public health issue. Public health issues always win over recreation. And I consider the building as a recreation. So looking at public health perspective, as soon as you can get that stuff away, yeah. the better. Um, and you know, to tell a child, do not follow you. So that's anything that the town or village or volunteers can do to move that stuff off the street as soon as it fits the street, the better off it be for the What's the status of the lower park? Lower. Not great. You're talking the trailer park? The trailer park. Are, the, are those mobile homes condemned? Do we know? We've not actually heard the word condemned about any structure of Johnson's. Okay, okay. Um, I think I saw a sign. Yeah. And and the state, uh, have, what have you, what have you I seen? Heard yeah. Have you been down through there? I, I drove through. I, I hope nobody's there. So, they are. it depends on who you're talking, it depends on what, what oh. you're talking about. Each one is different. Some of them do not have people living there, and they've just left. Uh, some of them have people who have gutted their mobile home and sprayed it down with a bleach solution. Uh, some of them are probably in the midst. I just know the two first two scenarios. Of, I know those are two true statements at this point. Um, so, but yeah, it's not pretty down there, but it's for a darn sure. We do have a dumpster down there. Um, people are taking advantage of it. People were down there today with tractors you know, moving stuff into the dumpster. I'm totally in favor of providing the dumpsters. I am not in favor of waiving dump fees for people because we just don't have any control over it. At least with a dumpster, we have some reasonable expectation that the trash is coming from the flood event. If we waive the dumpster fees, you know, you're going to have people all over town saying, oh, i got to go get rid of my tires. And, you know. Well, I think there are ways that we can work it out where, you know, don't take tires, but... Or the I hear transfer you. stations and um, uh, the dumps themselves could waive the fees. If they, they could, want to do could. that, that's... The state, the state you know, could. Yeah, there's a lot of people any, that could that, yeah. that are not... Well, any, any of the private partners that have stepped up, you know, if, if you're listening right now, you know, we would love, we would love more to step up. Um, okay, uh, Scott. I mean, we can add for the trailer park thing. Um, when I mean, like, there's trailers that were just trash people who walked away from. Um, towns reached out, park owners reached out to the state. Um, what the state did is the ticket was given to the SEOC. Health Operations Center and Burlington and the Health Department that we've gotten involved. They helped try to figure this out so they're not having to know this and because of our name, there's already been a script. I don't know because I'm not a really now on the entire awesome. Um, but they've done this before. So write a ticket to the SEOC and say you have next amount of trailers that you know, have abandoned on us. Add us to your list. And I think, like I said last time, this happened with our game. They got involved and things started to happen a bit more organized. They don't want those fellows just being crushed, put through a dumpster, and sent to the landfill because it's special waste. It doesn't material so Especially if you want to discuss this. They don't want it. Okay. Um, I think that honestly, the idea of the Quite there yet. Maybe we will be in a week or two, but after this is there, but it's not going to be there. Okay. Bye. Okay. Ready to get down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any other next steps for photo event? Okay. Um, future. Was that a yes? Was no, that no, 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 no. Keep going. <laughs> Future select board meeting, yeah, future select board meeting minute location. 
because the first floor of the office is unavailable because meaning everyone moved to the second floor it's shut down for now it will by the way we were talking to rosemary earlier today the shop the office will remain shut down for the foreseeable future so folks should plan to not have a physical office location phones are up um, and running even i assume emails Payments can be made of Dropbox. Or they can go via credit card Beautiful. I'll say. Um, so there are oh. lots of options out there, just not physically walking into the office building. The Dropbox reminded me of one thing. Going back to the previous item, uh, if somebody wants to make a monetary donation, they need to get it to the Dropbox of the town clerk's office. If they want it to be a, for a specific entity that was part of helping, uh, great, they can put that in the memo line and that will all be handled through the town clerk. So town of Johnson would well, be Well, we haven't there. actually talked about taking donations for individuals. If you're for you're individuals, the town would need to be involved. From individuals. No, I mean for individuals. Like, if we're gonna talk about, okay, so if we're going to talk about monetary donations, I feel like this is a topic in and of itself, which is cool. But I say that because if we start talking about accepting donations for Johnson residents, it means we need to have a system in place for dispersing, if that's what I, you're referring to. No, no. If somebody okay. wants to make a donation. If somebody wants to make a donation to Town of Johnson Flood Relief, just put it in the memo line. If you, if you want your donation to go to sewer, tran sewer plant rebuild or, or whatever it may be, just put it in the memo line and the clerk will handle that. We do not handle individual resident uh, filing, but if you want to donate money or a monetary item for flood relief to the town of Johnson, it needs to go to the drop box. No elected officials can handle that. And also, if you wanted to, if you want to donate to the people of Johnson, not the town of, then go to United Way. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, tax interest and payment date discussion. So the good news through all this is the town taxes were sent out on time. That, that's a positive thing. We're going to need to be able to recover from this. Okay. This is cash flow. Uh, and the first installment is what? August 10th? That's roughly three or four weeks from now. This item is on there because a resident called the town office and I answered the phone. Uh, and they were seeing what the town could do to either forgive the first installment, delay the first installment, forgive the interest, um, or something for affected flood victims. Um, what are the board's thoughts? Well, let's just ask Rosemary's thoughts before we start talking about it. What are Rosemary's thoughts? Are you going to forgive interest for the entire town? Or are you going to do an abatement on the affected properties? Is that a lot of BCA meetings to do an abatement? Could be. <laughs> so, if, so that is one way to handle it, then. I'm sure that the trailers that are, have been destroyed, they will probably come before the board to abate. This wasn't anybody. That was in the mobile home park, but I didn't think about that one either. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we should, well, the first thing I wonder is how long it's going to take for us to get a report from somebody like the park fire marshal through the state, I think it's the state actually. I feel like we should have a little bit of information. Sorry, I thought about this now. <laughs> I've already talked about it. Um, you and I. Uh, we should have probably have a little bit of information about what it is we're talking about in terms of impact, but regardless, we have people impacted, like regardless of home impact, we know we have a good chunk of our population of home uh, households 
that are impacted. The thing I'm not fully understanding is how many of those households are owners or property owners versus renters. So if you're talking about the subset which are property owners, like I'd actually like to just know the numbers because if we know the numbers, I feel like we'd be better informed in order to make a, a good decision. Do you have any thoughts on how we would get those numbers? That's what yeah. interests me. <laughs> That's something you're gonna have the answer. Door to door. Um, I think that the fire marshals go through. Like I'm hoping we can get some information from two one one on some of this. I do have a list of people. Oh, I do have a list of people who have filed two one one. It is a short, completely inaccurate list, by the way. Um, and <laughs> they asked me to fill in the gaps, and I laughed. <laughs> Because the gaps are like this, and the list is like this. <laughs> Not cracks. Um, so, but anyway, like, I don't know. I think it's a combination, probably, of some of the property assessment, along with maybe asking the village for electric information, um, and then figuring out what residents aren't covered with a combination of that data, would be my guess. That's where Can't hear you, Scott. <clears throat> With meters on the house, the village might be able to get a rough, very almost accurate idea of what is the apartments, what are single family entities, even up the ownership aspect of it. Just no, the meters. listers probably have better information. Listers have yeah. one part time assessor. Yeah. Yeah. And our part time assessor was affected by this call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I can do this. Owner occupied will generally have different tax bills. Um, so we have a couple of conversations going on. I just want to make sure that we have one conversation going on for minutes purposes. Um, got it, Carl. Thank you. Rosemary made the point about homestead versus non-homestead. Um, noted. Did you have something? No, I, th I was just going with homestead. I mean, that's very clear on the property tax bill. What is the primary? So as for now, the first installment will stay as is. Is that where we're at? I think, I think so. Okay. So and if people do want to grieve, grieve the, how would that work? If they are asking for an exit for help, Rosemary? Asking for a tax abatement? They can ask for a tax abatement any time. Right? Yes. Yeah, and they, they could ask for a partial. Time. What's that? They could ask for a partial abatement, which would be only interest. And penalties. I think that they only we have nine day, nine good days of tax year. Have what? Nine good days. Because it started July first. The the window for the tax abate appeal? No. No. Tax, for tax, tax, tax year. Tax year, tax year started no. July first. So you're saying those are the only nine days where you don't owe the town money? Is that what you mean? What's the nine, nine day? days? What do you do? No, from the flood bed, there's nine or ten days that their house, the, the, the property wasn't good. Wasn't oh, gotcha. Wasn't yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think there's yeah, always be a lot more simple than just dealing with oh, requests for abatements. Because then you can look at the individual yeah. impacts of, of a property. Yeah. Um, versus doing some blanket thing. I, I'm not comfortable doing blanket. I tend to agree with you. Uh, are the ladies in the office okay with just telling people if they're affected by the flood, if they're calling to complain about the tax bill, if they have the right to request an abatement? Which every taxpayer does at any time anyways. It's not really... Maybe we can get a list of the most affected people and send them a letter. 
that's what I was going to say. Once we have that list, I would like to be proactive. But um, until we have that list, I think, yeah, not much we can. Well, we know affected properties. I can certainly go door to door and ask them, but yeah, that would be helpful. Do we have a flood map? Do we have a perimeter? Is that something we're not, um, that's that we can pictures. actually find? Yeah, you have yeah. Uh, Probably a flood map that's not accurate. Right. At 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but what you can do, I, I think the state did aerial flybys of all the most damaged places. They probably have some sort of map. In it. They're getting as much data as they can. Yeah. I think okay. UVM just uh, interesting. Drawings are around. Eventually, there will be better maps. In the interim, it, it may be some groundwork. Yeah. yeah, have they? I mean, there were always were the FEMA flood rate maps, which were the basis as of whether or not you were eligible for flood insurance. Um, have those maps been updated, or are those still the same? Yeah, and yeah, they were notoriously inaccurate to begin with. Okay. I had a conversation with Rebecca Pfeiffer today because Hyde Park is due, uh, ours were 81, and she promised. Yeah, Johnson did have some away, data it's done, it's but I, A and R did it, and it was a couple of years ago. Do you remember Scott? Well, yeah. That's the best answer that you do. Their process, they'll get here. So Carl and Rosemary and me, um, maybe we can connect tomorrow and figure out a good plan of attack. If that works, does that work for you, Rosemary? You're in the office tomorrow, Carl. Okay. I will be out in the morning, but I can come in here. Okay, if you're out, then Carl and I can start thinking about it and just run it by you. Okay, we'll do that. That sounds good. Okay, let's do it. I'll even shut my phone off for it. Okay. 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 Um, all right, so that's the next up good. is Greater Bit Set. Sounds really professional. Yeah. Last time you purchased them, how much were they? $18.00 Did you do the math or you want me to do it? I got to split it. got to split it. Not to exceed 3600 Or just... Okay. Motion to authorize Jason Whitehill to spend an amount of money not to exceed $3,600 per greater bits. We have a motion to have a second? Second. Discussion? Um, eyes? Did, aye. You, did you have aye. a caveat? Not. Okay, aye. Eyes? Okay, cool. Uh, did we have, everyone voted? Aye. Aye. Aye, um, good. Uh, second thing would be that they set it up this afternoon. Uh, I talked to Skyler from the Farming Garden for their name. Jason, just a little louder. Oh. <laughs> I talked to Skyler from the Farming Garden today, around noontime, about putting her name in the hat. So there's a question that was just letting us know. A uh, motion to authorize Jason to rent a yellow piece of equipment per over a thousand dollars from Johnson Farm and Garden to complete grant work. Okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks, later. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second, but only if it's orange. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, ooh, yeah, go for it. it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, uh, if you are in contact with Johnson Farm and Garden, could you find out uh, if they're charging for those light signs and for how long we can have them? And when they need to go back, I don't see a need for them very much past this week. Um, but that was 
an emergency communication item that was very high on the priority list and uh, Johnson Farm and Garden Hardware and Rental really stepped up and delivered them and had them set up and everything and uh, Beth just had to go put the message in it. So if you, so if you could follow up on if there's a cost and when they need to be back, that would be great. Madam Chair. Oh. At their convenience. Uh, we'd like to play this week if all possible. We should update the message for, for FEMA. Yeah. Yeah. Did we decide where we're going to meet next time? I know you mentioned it, no. but I don't think we actually decided it. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Here. <laughs> Thank you. If the college allows it. Um, okay. What that is. Or if they're charging us for us, are you going to charge us for us? Those, <laughs> for those disaster recovery signs that we really appreciate <laughs> so much. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that would be lovely. And I'll just be, I want to just change the signs over that actually tonight. I might just have that in tomorrow. Do you think? Okay, uh, <laughs> thanks for asking. Uh, feature select board meeting location, I was reminded that I skipped over. Um, I did talk to the college um, at some point late last week about us kind of being a burden and are we being a burden and is it okay that we continue to use the space? They did say yes for now. Um, Basically it was, uh, yeah, you can. We understand you need public meetings as well as a space to work out of, um, which I uh, which I'm very grateful. But I think that we should also just respect the fact that they'll be in session in not too long from now. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know when they go back to their date is, but I would suspect it is they're going to be all hands on deck to be ready for opening in about a month, would be my guess. Um, so for right now, I think we are going to probably be here maybe for the next meeting, hopefully. Um, but if we can be just brainstorming what it will look like, because I'm not sure we're going to be in the municipal building for a while. Uh, Scott? And maybe raising up the great intro. It is already set up for public meetings, live broadcasting, all that stuff. It's actually what we have one to reach out to you about. Yeah, okay. Okay, just wanted to throw that out there so that we're actually talking about it. Yeah. And again, thank you the college for your support. Um, okay, next up is an update on town administrator search. Yeah. You promised only two minutes. I'll, I'll try and make you it quick. You did say three, so. I said two or three, uh, but I'm wasting time. I so, know, right? Uh, so we had nine, nine total applicants. Um, I have been in touch with uh, Scott Meyer, a different Scott Meyer. Oh, good. Um, from <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> Resources. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, he has conducted three interviews. I talked with him about those three interviews. Um, really, I guess, and we had two responses for the community development Community Economic Development Specialist yeah. position. Yeah. Uh, one of those clearly is unqualified. Yeah. So I think we had one that was maybe qualified. So ultimately, um, I, I would like to try and get together a summary and shift it out to everybody. I don't think we should lose, I know we have an emergency, but I don't think we should lose focus on that. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so I'll, I'll push out the summary results of my conversations with Scott Meyer. Then I think the questions we really have to answer, and I don't know if we can answer them tonight or not. Are we happy? I think I pushed out all my resumes to everybody. Yeah. Um, are we happy with what we've got, or do we want to re-advertise either or position? And I don't know that we can answer that question tonight, but we need to be thinking about that. Okay. And if, we're, if we are happy with them, what is the next step? What is the next step? Really, the next step to me also is going to entail an analysis of do we hire one person for the combined position 
or do we still want to try and hire a town administrator separately from a community economic development coordinator specialist uh, position? And that may answer part of our question. That the answer to that question may answer part of the question of are we happy with what we've got? Okay. Um. And then if we are happy with what we have, I mean, are interviewing the candidates going to help inform that? I would think that that would be appropriate to do. I know, personally, I would like to not rely solely on Scott Myers' interviews. Or, uh, I hear you. Yes. <laughs> the other Scott Myers. He's denying yeah, right. right. even doing interviews. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't help it. Uh, yeah, I, and I know I, we need another meeting like a hole in the head, but th yeah. this is important stuff and we need to get it right this time. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, we'll look for the summary. Okay. Last item on the agenda is executive session for employee relations. Is that the same one as above? Um, no. Well, A1. A1. I motion to enter. To enter into executive session as allowed by 1 BSA 313 A1, I believe, uh, to discuss a personnel issue. Inviting Rosemary to stay. And Carl? Carl. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. And are we. Carl, uh, don't leave me. Please. Okay, so. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have Thanks a motion. Everyone. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Aye. Um, Donna, they run the text. Do the, I'll email you the results. Unless you want to hang out in this like extreme water. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Crazy water.